You are the light of the world. Not only that, but you're also the salt of the earth. This is true. You are the faithful people of this community. That's what you are. There is no doubt, in fact, about that. You are the persons who are following God's light. We've become a little dim. We have become a little tasteless in what, we, in what we're doing. We become mundane in many ways. We are not the bright shining stars that God has wanted us to be. That's hard to say, isn't it? Some would say that I am being harsh. I am being unkind. I should not say that to you. But you know something? What is true can be seen without any reservation. You are baptized into God's holy people. You are the salt of the earth. From the very moment of your conception to the very moment of your death, you are the flavor within the Catholicism of this world. It is up to you to be the one to spread that faith. I don't know if many of you have ever really tasted salt. Most of you wouldn't. You know, we, how many times have we dampened our finger and stuck it on the top of the salt shaker just in order to get a little bit of salt or the taste of it? Nowadays we have that lovely sea salt, you know, the one you have to crank and you have to get that, you get a big lump of salt. And how nice that is. You pop that in there, you, you let it soak around in your tongue for a few minutes. Well, you know something, get a little bit of sugar afterwards and put that on your tongue just when you finish with the salt. And the sugar will taste extremely sweet. Why? Because the salt has enhanced the taste of the sugar. That's a known fact. That's why we use salt. Salt is used to enhance the flavor of our food. But also we turn around then and we use all other sorts of spices and everything else to enhance it as well. And if we use too much of the other spices, we kill the taste of the salt. What happens is we put more salt in to try and get that flavor back. But then we add more spices. And before then we're finished, we can't even taste the food itself. Well, in the same way, we are practicing our faith in some way. We are using our faith properly, yes. But we bring in everything else in on top of it. And by the time we finish bringing everything else in on top of it, we don't have any faith. Then we try to get back a little bit of it and we keep adding to it to try and see if we can make it flavorful again. We shouldn't have added anything in the first place. Your faith is your faith. It doesn't need anything extra, extra added to it. It just needs you to follow it and to be part of it to learn about it. You're not adding something to it, you're learning something about it. That's the difference. And if we take that idea of our faith and put it solely in that, I that respect of our lives, then we become something of flavor to others. When people see us, doing something, they want some of that. They want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They want to be able to fit in to a group of people that are thinking like-minded as they are. They want to be part of it. 
they see something within it in the way that you practice your faith. <coughs> Again, he uses the idea of the light. What a wonderful idea. Light is something that is very apparent to us. I was looking at a Discovery Channel recently and they showed a picture from the space station of our Earth. And it just happened to be a kind of like the sun, whichever way the picture was taken, half of the world was in darkness and the other half was in the sun, the light of the sun. And a line would kind of went down through the middle of America, the picture that was taken, and you could see all the cities lit up like little tiny dots. Have, you, have you, any of you seen that picture? Well, that's your faith. Each and every little community that you have is that little tiny light that would join together becomes an exceptionally bright shining star. Of course, the thing is, we all want to be that little individual light. And by being that little individual light, well, we're only a tiny speck. We're not fulfilling coming together to become that bright star, that bright understanding of what it is to be in Catholicism or to be a Christian for that matter. The apostles were told that you are the light of the world. Not just somebody who knows how to preach. I'm not that good at it. It's not me who's going to make your light burn brightly. It may help to sustain it, but it won't burn it brightly for you. I can't do that. That's up to you. You are the one who is going to be that bright shining star at some stage. When you're at home in your house, how do you talk to your family? How do you express to your family about your faith? Or do you just say, well, you know something, I'm not going to say anything because it, all it does is it rouses a row in the household. So I'm going to keep quiet. I will ask the Holy Spirit to actually do it for me instead. And the Holy Spirit leaves it to you and you leave it to the Holy Spirit and between the two of you, nothing happens. Why? Because the Holy Spirit says that you are the one that's filled with the light. You all know what it's like to be in a very dark place. I mean, when the power goes out, we have no light. You get one candle, one penny candle. Light that penny candle and put it in the middle of the room and you can see how it brightens up that whole area. Even just one tiny penny candle can give enough, a lot of light. We're so used to a bulb with 100 watts in it that it brightens up everything that we see. Well, our faith should be like that 100 watt bulb. It should be ready at all times to come on, to be able to support, to give, to understand, to help, to teach to be one with God. <laughs> That's what we're asked to do. That's what this gospel is talking about. It's talking about you being that light. You being the individual that goes out and spreads the light. Be the flavor of what it is to be a Christian or a Catholic or someone who believes in God. Stand up for your beliefs. Don't let people trot all over you, as we have done for many of a year. We have become very lukewarm. Anyone try ever drinking lukewarm water? It's horrible. It tastes terrible. Water is only good unless it's cold. You try and give it a half, just half warm it up in the kettle and see what it's like. Now add a little bit of salt to that water and see what will happen. <laughs> it even gets worse. But if you heat that salt 
to a hot temperature. Add a bit of sugar to it. And before you know it, you've got a very nice drink. The doctor wouldn't agree with you, but you know, it tastes good. <laughs> Our faith is supposed to taste good. That's what John of the Cross is telling us. That our faith is something that is achievable. Something that is good. Something that is so good that we cannot hold it back. But it must come from our hearts to do that. That's what our understanding of our Christian faith is. <coughs> It doesn't mean that we have to go out and beat everybody down and say the only way in life is to be a Christian. No. They should see that for themselves by the way we live our lives. How good are we with charity? How kind are we to someone who needs it? How forgiving are we with those who look for forgiveness? How faithful are we to our life of prayer or to our life within the church? Are we just rolling along mundanely each day? Or are we willing to move a little further and to be that bright shining star or that flavor that we use in our faith? Are we ready to make that stand? To show our young people, of course especially, that we are people of substance. We're not just people of an obligation that seems to think that we just have to do something. That's one of the biggest reasons why a lot of young people leave the church. Because everybody around them doesn't show a zeal for the church. They just moseying along, bobbing around like a duck, one of those plastic ducks you have in the back, just bobbing around, following every wave that comes with it, not making any statements, not making any difference. And that's what young people see. When I talk to young people sometimes I ask them that question, what do you see in the church? And they would say, oh, a lot of just mundane stuff. There is nothing happening. It's not happening because we have not allowed it to happen. We're holding it back. We're holding ourselves back. If we don't show them the light of Christ in our hearts, how do you expect them to see and to do what we do? It's hard. It's not easy. Pope Francis has told us that we are a united church. I wonder if he was standing right here, right now, looking down at St. Francis of the Tejas Catholic Church, would he see that uniteness here? Or would he see all little tiny dots of light each person with their own sense of faith, but not willing to join together as one. That's the fear I have. We are all going so individualized that we're not able to come back together again. That's a big fear. It is something that I think we have to work with. That's why this year I'm talking about building disciples for the future. All of you who have been at our last couple of meetings will have heard me talk about this. Well, not only are you going to be hearing about it at the meetings, you're going to hear it in our homilies throughout the next year. And hopefully, by listening to that understanding of building disciples for the future, we can unite not just as a people of St. Francis of the Tejas, but as a people in unity with God, first and foremost, and then become a united parish together with a single goal 
of giving God what is needed to be given, which is ourselves at the end of the day. So I want you to pray. I want you to try to engage in that process. I'll be here to help you. I can't do it for you, but I will be here to help you. And if you don't like what I have to say, you know, go to another priest and ask him and see what he'll tell you. I hope <laughs> that he will say the same that I'm saying. We are united in faith. Let us bond together in the unity of Christ, and especially during the sacrifice of the Mass, that we use this time to enlighten others, to become one with Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs>